commit them are lumped into one group by the single word the. Their inheritance is the second death. The contrast in outcomes for both groups is laid out in no uncertain terms. Failure to respond to an unthinkable eternity. This is part of um, Blaise Pascal's um, Pascal's um, uh, question. He would go to atheists that were old and maybe even dying and he'd ask them. He'd say, hey, do you want to risk burning in hell for eternity? Billions and trillions of years? Burning and suffering? Or would you rather be in heaven working as a Christian with good Christian people and have every Sunday off yet to work and um, our main duty would be to give glory to God and praise God. God. The angels don't sing. Humans sing. So there will be a lot of singing in heaven for us uh, giving glory to God. God is worthy. Um, I think I've gone over my time. <laughs> The same angel that showed John the city of Babylon and its destruction now shows John the New Jerusalem, the, uh, Jesus' wife, the New Jerusalem. Earlier God called his people to come out of Babylon to avoid its judgments. The place they will go is the New Jerusalem. In exchange for the allure and pleasures of worldly Babylon, they will enter a city that reflects the indescribable glory of its king. The gates and foundation bear the names of the tribes of the twelve apostles. I'm sorry, the twelve tribes of of the Jews and of the twelve apostles, respectively. In the New Jerusalem, the Old Testament people of Israel and the New Testament church now live together as one. They are now the people of God. This is going to be great. I imagine everybody getting along, everybody's happy, everybody's trying to work together. No competition. We're all doing the same thing. Have a good time. Worship God. And, and have we all have our own jobs. And then Sunday we have off. Or Saturday. The city gates and foundations bear the names of the twelve tribes and of the twelve apostles, apostles respectively. Each dimension is approximately 1,500 miles, making the base 2.25 million square miles. The ground floor alone would provide enough living space for more people than have ever lived in the history of the world. Oh, I, th I said 15 miles. It's 1,500 miles square, uh, this um, building that will house us. Each dimension approximately 1,500 miles, making the base 2.25 million square miles. The ground floor alone would provide enough living space for, all, for more people than who have ever lived in the history of the world. The gold recalls the main material of the temple. And the twelve stones recall the stones on the breastplate of the high priest. The entire city will be a holy temple where God and the Lamb dwell, and whose inhabitants will be priests who serve God. The book of life is the registry of the redeemed. The new creation will be a return to the Garden of Eden. Paradise regained. 
Yes. The original order will be restored with the redeemed ruling over all creation with Christ. The tree of life and the pure river once guarded by the cherubim with the flaming sword of Eden reappear to beckon the weary pilgrims of the Lord of their future inheritance. The longing for a future glorious city of God can be traced back to the time of the Old Testament patriarchs. Abraham waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. The term New Jerusalem is just one of several names given to this future city of God. It is also called this, the Holy City, the Heavenly Jerusalem, Mount Zion, and the Pride of the Lamb. Many theologians refer to the New Jerusalem as the crown of the new creation. Perhaps nothing in Christianity has been caricatured as much as heaven or represented as inaccurately. The Bible presents heaven as a very tangible place, a city called the New Jerusalem on a new earth. Revelations 21 verse 1 through 22 verse 5 describes the characteristics of this New Jerusalem. So, the preparations in heaven, the Apostle John saw the New Jerusalem descending from heaven to earth, dispelling the notion that our eternal home is up in heaven. Instead, heaven comes to earth. Our city is created in heaven and comes down to earth, where we will be living in the Garden of Eden like it was designed. We will all have jobs, and one of those main jobs will be it's not a job, it'll be our pleasure to worship God. God wants us to sing and dance for Him out of respect and love and admiration for His creation. <clears throat> in the, in the, um, after the millennium, in the new heaven, there will be an absence of sin. Sin has been paid for, and Satan will have been banished to the lake of fire for eternity. The tragic effects of sin on this present world will be absent from the New Jerusalem. For the former things have passed away. Those former things include those who, during their life on earth, preferred sin over righteousness. There will be indescribable beauty in heaven. John describes the beauty of the New Jerusalem using the language at his disposal but um, as he can describe it and as he sees it because he's lived in a rural area but one gets the impression that John is trying to describe the indescribable. Some of the traditional images of heaven like pearly gates and streets of gold have their origin in John's characterization. The number 12 occurs eight times in John's description of the city, referring to gates and foundations and the angels to the tribes, the apostles, the 12 apostles associated with them. 12 is the number of the people of God. And the city's 12 foundations are probably not separated from each other, but are 12 layers encircling the city its brilliant colors would then blend together and add to its beauty. <clears throat> Everything is in gigantic proportions. The New Jerusalem is a cube measuring 1,400 miles on each side. It is notable, notable that the most holy place inside the tabernacle was cubical in shape as well at 1,960,000 square miles the New Jerusalem that's John 
describes is nearly four times the size of the largest American state, Alaska. It is an inclusive city with room for people redeemed from every tribe, tongue, and every nation throughout all history. There'll be enough room for all the people that ever died and are uh, li living today and that will be born. Plenty of room for everybody. It is also a godly city. In this Jerusalem, there is no house of worship. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The glory of God illuminates it, and the Lamb is its light of the city. There will be nations on the new earth, but they will be free to come and go through the gates closed, through the gates of the city. Gates are always open because there is no fear of attack. The gates are never closed. For the same reason, the walls measure only 250 feet high, short in comparison to the area they enclose because they are meant only to outline the city's limits. The chief characteristic of this city is, is holiness. The gates are really a part of a, the wall that surrounds the city. John sees the wall glittering like a diamond bracelet. A city of, it is going to be a city of light. A river of life throws, flows from God's throne, watering trees that bear food for all the inhabitants as in the beginning. The eternal occupations. God's servants will be filling work to do that fits them. And they will rule with Jesus over the new creation forever. Sometimes heaven is referred to as a country, and we think of its vastness. Sometimes heaven is referred to as a city, and we think of its 